Hello everybody. We are from VMAX. I am Kevo George. In the last video, we have already discussed the first two criteria for speaking assessment. That is fluency and cohesion, grammatical range and accuracy. Those who have missed that our first video can go back and see that video. Today, we are going to discuss the other two criteria, namely lexical resources and pronunciation. The third criteria for the assessment of your speaking is based upon the lexical resources. It refers to the use of vocabulary. Students often have confusion regarding the use of vocabulary. Those students who don't have good fluency in the language may find it very difficult to use difficult words. For them, I would advise to use the common words as effectively as possible. They should have complete command over the fluency. They should be able to speak English without longer gaps and express all their ideas in using the simplest possible words. They don't have to worry about difficult words as such for create, uh, getting a good score or a satisfactory score like 6.5 or 7. But if you're looking for a higher score, um, 7 and above, then certainly you need to prove your proficiency in academic use of vocabulary. The formal words should be under your command. Frankly speaking, the students of BMAX Academy are able to score 7 and above and often 8 and 8.5 even for speaking because we teach them and we train them how to use certain formal vocabulary effectively during the time when they do this speaking session. The case with writing is different. Although in writing, an exhibition of your vocabulary is going to have a detrimental effect or a negative impact in your score, in speaking, it's going to improve your score. So you are advised to use any number of powerful formal words in your speaking. Not only in the first part and second part, but also in the third part, you should use very powerful vocabulary. The fourth and the last criteria for making an assessment of your speaking is based upon your pronunciation. IELTS doesn't require any kind of accent. So don't worry about accent if at all you don't have it. If you have an accent, it is good for you. But the most prominent element of your pronunciation should be clarity in speaking. Some students come with the American style of speaking with nasal sound and the incoherent way of pronunciation. Such incoherent words and nasal accent is not needed for IELTS. But intonation which is called the musical way of speaking a language is often advisable. Even if you don't have it, don't worry about it. But one thing you should remove from your speaking, that is your mother tongue influence. A mother tongue influence is going to reduce your score in IELTS speaking. The proper pronunciation of individual words is very important. Certain common words like uh, P-O-L-I-C-E. How do you pronounce that word? Some people pronounce it as police. Others pronounce as police. But the exact pronunciation of that word is police. M-O-N-E-Y. How do you pronounce that word M-O-N-E-Y? Most Malayalis pronounce that word as money, but na sound is not there in English. It should be pronounced as money. O-N-L-Y. It's a very common word. We often use it. Malayalis tend to pronounce it with like uh, 
only. But that's a wrong pronunciation. You should use it like only. D-E-B-T. What is the pronunciation for that word? Most people say that. But that's not the pronunciation. The pronunciation of D-E-B-T is that. So there are lots of commonly mispronounced words for we Malayalis. We will teach you a list of these commonly mispronounced words so that you can improve your pronunciation. So mainly, there are four areas of your speaking assessment. First one is fluency and cohesion in which you should make sure that you are able to speak English without longer gaps, humming and hawing, corrections and grammatical errors. The second one as we come to the, is the grammatical range and accuracy. You should prove your command over the language by using different type of sentences without grammatical errors. Not only simple sentences connected with and, but, or, so that means the compound sentence are good, but don't use and, but so often, quite often. It's better to use more complex sentence pattern. The third criteria is lexical resources. It is here you got to prove your comment over vocabulary. So use as many words as possible formal words as possible here in this part in the first part at least 10 to 15 powerful words and second part and third part also you can interpolate as many powerful words as possible especially in the first part there are certain often repeated questions for that the answer to such type of questions you can use any number of powerful vocabulary write down the answers for the first part then you'll be very confident to speak about that type of um, situations in your IELTS speaking session and pronunciation is the last criteria as I told you the pronunciation of individual words should be practiced effectively one thing another thing is to remove the mother tongue influence from your conversation overall you should be developing your speaking skill by using this language in your day-to-day -day life not only for I am speaking test you should learn English but you should try to develop your skill in speaking by speaking it when you are among your friends when you are in the class when you are in the enjoying your free time with your uh, friends outside or inside your house wherever it is possible for you to speak in English you should take the take up that opportunity and develop your fluency in English all type of ideas should be expressed in English. Not only a particular idea, particular subject you should be able to speak, but you should be able to speak all silly or difficult ideas. If you deal with a difficult idea, I would advise you to use the simplest possible vocabulary for that. Today we have discussed two criteria for IELTS speaking. For more details, you can log into our website, bmaxacademy.com. So stay tuned with us.